Yes, hello there everybody, welcome back to the channel. Dodgy Gamer here, bringing you our first gameplay action on YouTube of Football Manager 2022. It's a short-term save, we need perfect for the beta, so we're going to go with the Postcards series. This is Postcards from Qatar. Yes, that's right, everybody. What else would it be from Dodgy Gamer but an international save to kick things off? But before we get into the why, why it's Qatar and the aims and all of that, just a quick reminder, this channel is your one-stop shop for all things international management on Football Manager 2022. So if that's the kind of thing, just hit that like button on the video, subscribe to the channel, get the bell on for notifications so you don't miss any of the international action. But hey, if club management is more your thing than international management, then check me out on Twitch where I'm doing a live stream beta series with Besiktas. But yeah, we take over at Qatar, a side ranked 47th in the world. And we've got a few aims here. Now, the first thing, we're going to try out a new competition, the FIFA Arab Cup. It's a new competition, we'll talk about it a bit more later, but it's hosted by Qatar as a warm-up for the World Cup, of course, in 2022, which they will also host. But the fun doesn't stop there. The summer of 2023 will see Qatar appear at the Asian Nations Cup hosted by China. And it gets even better and stranger. In 2024, Qatar will appear as a guest nation at the Copa America. So that's quite a few tournaments to get through. The Arab Cup, the World Cup, the Asian Cup, the Copa America. There might be a couple of other youth tournaments along the way as well. So yeah, that's why we're here at Qatar. There's just a whole multitude of competitions that they play in, get some different international experience, and maybe one or two trophies that we might be contenders for, particularly this Arab Cup and the Asian Cup. We, we should be, maybe not the favourites, but we should be amongst the teams that are expected to do well. So let's just take a basic overview of our squad as things stand. I still haven't set up my international squad view yet. I must work on that for the next episode. But you'll see here, all these players, you can see from the club names, they're based in Qatar itself, in the Qatari league. But you'll also see from the names, there are a few players here with rather non-Arabic sounding names, like Sebastian Soria or Rodrigo Tabata. Luis Ciara. Of course, these are players who've come from South America, but spent many years in the Qatari league and have taken up nationality. You see here, Ciara, for example, one season in his native Brazil, and then, what, 12 years in Qatar? But even though these players are domestic-based in the Qatari league, we do have some potential stars here. We've got Almoez Ali, 32 goals in 68 caps for his country, Plays mainly as an advanced forward. And we see he's not a world star, but 15 finishing, 15 acceleration, 14 pace. I think at the Asian continental level, he's going to be a very useful player. We've also got this guy out on the wings, Akram Afif. Potential value of up to 12 million plays as an inside forward on the left, just my kind of guy. Now you see he's had some experience in Spain and Belgium as well. Never played too many games there, but coming back to Qatar, he's done pretty well in the local league. Rodrigo Tabata is an interesting one. Originally uh, originally from Brazil, but spent the season at Besiktas before transferring to Qatar, but only ever played four games for the Qatari national team. Now 41 years old, but still, if we look at the report, considered a decent player. Anyway, let's talk you through the story so far. Now, I took over in mid-September, so my first game in charge was this game here against Australia, and as you can see, not off to the best start. We lost 2-1, but we were kind of finding our feet here. Since then, we've gone on uh, an unbeaten run, two wins, two draws. The two wins have come in competitive action in Asian Cup qualifiers. We've beaten Afghanistan and India, both teams beaten 2-0. And if we have a look at the group, those two wins were enough to confirm our qualification 
for that tournament. It's not going to take place until the summer 2023. Obviously, the late World Cup, the World Cup being in November and December of 2022, it delays the Asian Cup, but we've qualified with 18 months to spare. And our other games were friendlies, a nil-nil draw with Iran, and a 1-1 draw with Egypt. So those are both teams that, according to the world rankings, are better than us. So it was encouraging that we were able to at least avoid defeat. But on to the International Arab Cup, or FIFA Arab Cup, as it's known in the real world. So this is, as far as I can tell, it's going to be a one-off competition. Basically, the Confederations Cup, you know, used to be a tournament held by the World Cup hosts one year ahead of the big event to just test things out. That doesn't exist anymore. So Qatar are going to have this International Arab Cup. So 16 nations. There was a qualifying round, but that was played last summer. In FM, it's already set up with the group stage. And uh, as far as I can tell, I've checked online. These seem to be the actual real-life groups. Now, as hosts, we're in Group A. We're in here with Bahrain, Iraq, and Oman, so fellow Gulf states. Um, going by the world rankings, we should be getting out of this group. Then, obviously, looking at Group B, I mean, there's some tough teams that are potentially coming out of Group B. Tunisia, UAE, Syria, all with the potential to win this competition. Um, perhaps Group C, a little more straightforward. Morocco and Saudi Arabia, we'd expect to come out of that group. Group D, you can't look much beyond Algeria and Egypt for that one. But yeah, we're going to play our group stage matches in today's episode. So we're kicking off with a game against Iraq. Then we've got Oman and Bahrain. Hopefully, we're going to be able to get through. So you can see up here the expectation from the Qatari FA for this International Arab Cup is that we reach the quarter final. So that means basically we have to get out of the group stage. If we can then progress, it's just a straightforward knockout from there. Eight teams going into the quarterfinals. There's a third place playoff as well. So let's just see how well we can do. Now, tactically, we're set up to play a 4-3-3, but we've got three variations on this. We've got a kind of counter-attacking version for when we're up against some stronger teams. We've got a version where we try to control the possession and then we've also got more of a ticky tacker version. Now, I'm going to go with the ticky tacker version today. I'm just feeling good about our chances against Iraq. Our two key players, as we looked at in the squad preview, Akram Afif out on the left, who I've got playing as a trekatista, and Almoz Ali, who I've got playing as a false nine. We're getting a bit fancy with this one. We've also got a Ramduita out on the right. We'll see how it goes. So here we go then Iraq, Qatar, our opening game in this Arab Cup, this new competition. Can the Qatari boys get off to a winning start? Well, blink and you'll miss it. That first half is over. What a thrilling first half of gameplay action to bring you for the first time from FM22. Pretty even Stevens looking at the stats, so let's uh, have a word with the players and see if we can G them up a bit. So we're going with we didn't like what we just saw from this team. Well, we didn't actually see anything from the team. But yeah, we've motivated most of them. Almo is Ali. We need. You've got the ability to go and change the game for us. That hasn't really struck a chord with him. Okay, but at least most of the room is looking motivated or composed. Of course, with a ticky tack system, I have to keep reminding myself to be patient. Go on, here we go. 85th minute. And there's finally a highlight, and it's just directly a goal for Iraq. Ah, oh, man. No highlights at all in the game, and then it's just. Cross header goal. Right, here we go. 89th minute. We've got a free kick. Can we get something from this? Hassan fires it in. He gets the equaliser. Oh, three minutes of stoppage time added on. Wow. 85 minutes of nothing and then two goals right at the death. But is there another twist to come? Let's have a look. Well, no, there isn't. But okay, at least we didn't lose, I suppose. Okay, so the wait's finally over, but still yet to get a win with this Qatar team against the better teams we've come up against. Egypt, Iran, Iraq have all been draws. We're going to have to change that in the next game. All right, now I was going to skip ahead to the next game. Just a minor detail, but something I picked up on here in the FM22 beta that's not quite right. We got asked in the press conference about did we deserve that late goal 
which I said we did, of course, but look at this. It says here, do you have anything to say in response to Dick Advocat, manager of Iraq, admitting that Qatar deserved that late winner? It was a draw, right? Yeah, it was. I'll, of course, report that one as a bug, even though it's only a small detail. Make sure you report your bugs as well. All right, so on to match day two, then. We're taking on Oman. We see the other match has already been played, a draw between Bahrain and Iraq. Bahrain did beat Oman in their first game, which means the group at the moment looks like this. So a win today for us would be very important to put us up there with Bahrain, who we will play in the last match. OK, so we're going for the control possession tactic today. Perhaps the tiki tack against Iraq just didn't quite penetrate enough. So we'll see with different roles on the wings and up front, will we be able to craft ourselves a few more chances? OK, so here we go, Qatar. Oh, man, our second game in the Arab Cup. Can we get a win registered this time? All right, we're getting a highlight early on. This is progress from the last game. We're only in the sixth minute. And here we come. Aladin, Pedro Miguel, can we get the ball into the box here? Oh, Hatim's got the space, and what a screamer! Get in! Whoa, did you see that? Oh, let's have a look at that again. Lovely the way we switched the play across here. Hatim had the space, took a couple of touches. Oh, even the dogs got excited about that one. All right, a corner though for O oh Man. We've got a. Be wary of conceding an equaliser here. I've noticed that with FM22, that we've got the same exact thing in the Iraq game. When the ball is on the ground at the start of the highlight, you can almost guarantee it's going to be a cross and a header and a goal. OK, we've got a bit more action to come in this half, though. But this time, ah, OK, scrap what I just said. It obviously doesn't work for us. We started with the ball on the ground for the corner but the header went over and that's it for the half 1-1 one, one. and straight away 30 seconds into the half an injury what's happened to Al Eldin here potential foot injury well let's get Ismail Mohammed on in his place all right now we've got an Omani highlight oh we do not want to lose this game then we're gonna have to we're gonna have to go and beat Bahrain in the final match who are currently top in the group Oh, a vicious challenge there from Abdul Karim Hassan. What was he thinking? Right, so we've lost Seara. We've taken him off the holding midfield at a halfback. We've brought on Ahmed at left back. So we're going to drop back to balanced. We'll put these guys down to support as well. Yeah, we're going to have to now... Oh, we've gone from hoping that we could sneak a winner... Hoping we can hold on. It's another draw. Oof. That was not a good second half for us, was it? An injury early on and then a red card that kind of killed the game. We should have won that one. But we're getting a lot of praise from the media. Holding on, showing fighting spirit despite being a man down for most of the second half. However, we're potentially in trouble here. We've got to play form team Bahrain in our last game. Iraq get oh man, so we're probably looking at having to win to make sure we stay in the top two. All right then, key places up for grabs indeed. We are slight favourites, but Bahrain, of course, they've got the win. But they're looking for a point to guarantee their progress. Depending on the result in the other game, we might need a win, of course. We tweak things again. We're going for the counter-attack this time, respecting the fact that Bahrain are a bit of a stronger team. Obviously, Ahmed's going to have to come in. Haidos comes back in on the right wing due to the injury. So, you know, we're slightly restricted. But let's just see if the counter-attack, again, we need that direct penetration. Let's see if that's going to help us get it. Oh, so here we go then, this crunch game. Qatar take on Bahrain. Can we finally get a win on the board at this Arab Cup that we are hosting? Well, we start off with a promising attack. Ahmed, can he get the cross in? Oh, he gets it to Keira. Hatim, who scored that beautiful goal in the earlier game, can't get the shot off this time. But we've still got the ball. We've still got the chance. Atif, can he do something finally? There we go. Akram Atif with the early goal. It's 20th for Qatar. Could it be a key one? 
Right, so, so far that's been the only chance in the opening 10 minutes, but it's us on the ball again. We, we're definitely looking a bit sharper in this game. Is it the change, slight change in tactical approach? Is it the fact that we know we need to get the win? Well, time will tell. Of course, there's a long way to go in this game. We could end up being pegged back to a draw again, or even worse. Anyway, Haidosh playing with his back a bit there, but oh, there we go, Al Moez Ali. Oh, but it's going to be reviewed. What's going to happen here? They're appealing it. Oh, we've got the goal awarded. Fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, I was a bit worried there, Haidosh. He was with his back to goal a bit. I thought, you know, the chance had passed us by, but there, Atif plays in Ali. That's what we've been lacking throughout this tournament. We've been looking for those two to combine. They finally do. Yeah, it was level, I think. The review was correct. Oh, we're on our way. We're top of the group at the moment. And as things stand, Bahrain could be in trouble if Iraq take the lead against Oman. Right, 35 minutes coming up, and we've got another highlight here. We have just seen that Iraq have indeed taken the lead against Oman. Let's see what we can do here. Of course, that's going to... Oh, that was close. That's going to give Bahrain a bit more motivation, a bit more impetus to get back into this game. But if we can make it three before half-time, it's going to be very difficult for them. But there you see it. Iraq 1-0 up. So as things stand, we go through and Iraq join us as well. Anyway, it's half-time with 2-0 up. That's our best bit of football so far in this tournament. All right, we finally get a highlight in this half with five minutes to play. It's Qatar on the ball again. We've really dominated this game, certainly when it comes to big chances. Atif with the cross and Haidosh seals it. That's it. We're definitely through to the next round now. Fantastic performance from the boys when the chips were down today. Great stuff. Atif, let's have a look at this. Gets the cross in Afif, sorry. Got that wrong. And there we go. Al Haidosh with the little side foot into the net. Yes, we are going to top this group as well. We're leading on goal difference. And there we go. Yes, there we go. It's confirmed. Qatar with a massive win. 3-0. Uh, so you've got to feel sorry for Bahrain there. They were leading after the second round of matches. And they end up third in the group. It's Qatar going through with Iraq in second place. Oh, and we already know our opponents for the next round. Tunisia. So Tunisia finished second in their group, did they? Yeah, so UAE topped that group. Tunisia second. So there you go. The group stage is now complete. In the other groups, Saudi Arabia and Morocco going through as the 1-2 in Group C. Poor Palestine. They got thrashed in every game with a minus 14 goal difference. Egypt and Algeria going through in Group D as expected. And this is how things look for the knockout draw. So we're in the bottom half of the draw. If we can get through against Tunisia, it's either Saudi Arabia or Algeria in the semi-final. But I think at this stage, all of these teams have got a chance of winning it. It's a great competition. I love how even this is. Really tough to pick a winner. But that's what we're going to try and find out next time. So make sure you join me for the next episode. Can we win this Arab Cup? And make sure you drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Get the bell on for notifications. Get down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of our performance in the group stage and what you think of this competition and any experiences you've had with international management so far in the beta. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I'm Dodgy Gamer. I'll see you again for more postcards from Qatar.